Hello, I hope you're all well. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my book, Ferrum on 35mm in 2020. Now today this video is going to serve two purposes. One, a bit of shameless self-promotion, of course, and the other is just to go through a couple of shots that I really like from this, but also I think more importantly the shots that I thought didn't make the cut. So this book was shot over the course of a couple of days and then developed and edited all by myself. Um, I shot it on four reels of Kodak Color Plus, which have the negatives here. So that gave me around 140 images to work with. Um, narrowing it down was easy and difficult at the same time. I think the first wave was super easy. It was just a case of shots I just didn't like the composition of or shots where I missed focus or anything like that. Well, not missing focus, but you know, anything that technically didn't go very well or I felt it just didn't really work. Um, I think if anything, I probably, one of the things I would have changed was given myself less film to work with and therefore having to think about the shots a bit more. Uh, obviously I, I went in knowing that I had four reels to go through. So at times I know for a fact that when I was walking around there's a bit like, eh, yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever. Um, part of the logic there was that I was shooting a brand new camera to me anyway. Uh, this is my Nikon F5, which was, has been used for a little while just because I haven't done any proper photo shoots lately. I use my Nikon F5, which is an, am hello. <laughs> I use my Nikon F5, which is an absolute tank of a camera. This was the first time that I used this camera. I literally received it in the post uh, from Japan. I got out of the box. I bought batteries for it. Hello. I bought batteries for it and then I went out and shot it and I shot through two reels of film on one day, two reels of film on another day. The first reel I shot uh, was actually overexposed by a stop, but to be honest, you can't tell. For those of you who are interested as well, I used two lenses. Uh, I used my Sigma 28-70 f2.8. This is a really nice lens, uh, just very weighty. The combined weight of this and the f5 is about two kilograms, so pretty chunky setup. Uh, the other lens I use, which is my favourite lens I own, is my 50mm f1.4. Um, they probably got about 50% use each, depending. This is my go-to lens for pretty much everything, but there were some wide shots that I used, needed 28 mm for, or 35 whatever. Um, but there were a few shots where I did need that wider field of view. But uh, generally speaking, I was sticking with the 50mm 1.4. So in this, I think there's 18 images, if I remember rightly. Um, so 18 down from 150. Uh, these 18 were actually whittled down from 31. So I went from 150 images down to 31, to which I narrowed down to 18, I think, there and thereabouts. Um, it's not a very big book. Uh, part of the reason was, one, again, I was just really picky with what I wanted to include. There were some shots which I feel just weren't good enough or shots that I thought were good enough but didn't quite fit the theme. Um, so the theme is just documenting Ferrum in 2020. So there's a couple of shots that I did quite like but you couldn't tell where they were or you couldn't tell they didn't really stand out enough or they didn't have anything iconic about them. They were nice photos. But let's go through a couple of my favourite shots. Firstly we open up with a selfie and this building here, this is the um, the justice build. This is the courtroom that is no longer in commission in Ferrum. It is just a decaying building at the moment. It's not being used for anything. I really like the bold lines. I really like the colours, the architecture. Um, I actually shot this building before when I was scouting. So I was scouting for potential images and on loan I had a Nikon F801S which I ran through a roll of Ektar uh, through it on my first couple of one of the first rolls I ran through it was a roll of Ektar. It was a bit of a dull day, but you know what? I was really happy the shots that came out of that, but it wasn't part of the set. It wasn't shot on that film, so it's not included in the book, but just a side note. Um, I really like the bold striking lines here. I really like the colours and how they've come out. Um, yeah, just super simple, nice and easy. I really like that, and it just shows the building. It kind of shows, gives you an idea of where you are as well. Second page, there's uh, an image I really like, just a guy working on his car. Now this is just in a car park, this isn't on his driveway, this isn't anything like that. It's just a guy working on his car, and how often do you see that? Especially just walking around town. Uh, I just thought that was pretty neat, and it's actually nice to get someone in context. This entire book was shot during lockdown, it was shot during my exercise hours, so there is the odd cameo of M-Person in there. 
One I really liked was actually inside the shopping center. This was uh, one of the cafes in there and all the chairs stacked up upside down. Uh, I just like the intimate details. There you can see the way the wood's chipped away on them, the way they've been used over time. I just really like that. Um, and how, where I was inside using 200 speed film, obviously I had to open up the aperture quite a bit and you can see there just the depth of film, which is something that where I was out shooting broad daylight a lot of times, not really shallow depth of field images, which I really like. Um, who isn't a sucker for some shallow depth of field? One thing as well which I found really interesting, so when I was going through and I was walking around the shopping centre and uh, I had my F5 with me, and obviously from the front it's completely indistinguishable from a modern DSLR. If you put an F5 and a D5 together next to each other, if you didn't know anything about cameras you would just assume they were the same camera. They're so similar. And uh, one of the things that did kind of make me Kind of weird. Obviously, there's a whole, there's a massive conversation about street photography and what's the perfect camera for street photography. Do you want the camera that makes it so subtle, like a little point and shoot that won't get you noticed, or anything like that? I actually found people really friendly when I was using this camera because clearly it is a big, bulky, professional camera. Um, people just didn't think you were a weirdo walking around taking photos, which is essentially what I was. So uh, that was a result. Uh, but yeah, no, people coming up to me asking me questions, asking what I was doing, and not in a, what are you doing, but in a very intrigued, genuine way. They were very interested to know what uh, I was documenting, which was really nice to see, especially where I'm quite, I'm a very nervous individual. I'm very, <laughs> compare myself to a greyhound, long and nervous in new situations. Um, so that was really nice. A couple of people came up to me and actually asked what I was doing in a very friendly way. They were very interested and when I told them what I was working on, they were like, oh, that's really cool. That's really nice to see. So props to the F5 there. I don't know if that would have happened if I was using another camera. People just might have thought I was a weirdo. Maybe they did. Who knows? One thing I wanted to get as well in Ferrum was kind of the juxtaposition between old and new. Uh, there's a lot of old and new. It's a little market town that was established in the medieval times and kind of developed from there. And so you've got the newness of things like the shopping centre, which was built in the 80s. And then that contrasts through like this little kind of what's essentially a barn. Um, nothing really too special about the photo itself, but I like the juxtaposition between the motorway flyover and then the barn next to it. I like how those images are paired and kind of how they contrast between the harshness and grey that we kind of associate with modern architecture with the old stuff. Now, I'm not an architecture nerd and I already feel like a bit of a twat for talking how I am, but you know. I'll show my favourite image, which is the last image on there, and uh, I haven't got a name for it. The name for it I kind of had was Out, out to Lunch or um, Attack of the Karens, you can decide. But um, as I was walking around to the pharmacy at the end of my road and uh, they were closing every single day at one o'clock for lunchtime, they put a sign in the window, yeah, and the shutter's halfway down and apparently that's not good enough for this person and not clear enough indicator that they're actually closed. I found that very amusing when I was going through and walking around. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a professional photographer, I do this outside of work, I'm a retail manager by trade, so things like that I find really funny. <laughs> So of course, now I want to talk about the images that didn't quite make the cut. And it's not because I thought these were bad images, it's because I thought they didn't necessarily fit, or they weren't quite clear as to what it was, or just even where I actually realised that I kind of started out, so I started doing bits of Pharaoh, but I was cycling a lot, uh, so I would ride down and Titchfield, which is next to Pharaoh, was one of my little routes, I took a few photos in Titchfield, and um, I thought actually I wanted to focus it more on the town centre than fair brackets and the surrounding areas. Um, so one of the images I got, there's a couple, like there was this really cool, um, really old blue Sayat little hatchback that I really liked. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they're orange wheels or if they're rusted, but I really liked it. I love how the paint's kind of decayed, and especially next to where it's in front of the buildings in Titchfield, they're very old in comparison. And I just think that was a really nice contrast there. I really liked the image, but again, I just didn't feel like it worked in context of the book. Um, one of my one of my favourites, but again, I felt a bit weird because it's literally a, a photo of someone's house. Um, I call this the divorced house or whatever you want to call it, the house separation. Uh, to me, I really like this image because, or rather, I really like the house because it just looks like a house that's had a divorce. Like, you can see it's just straight in the middle. And it looks like, you can see at one point it was a semi-detached and then they've just gone, nah, sod it. Whether that was a wall bombing, it might well have been, it might have been, you know, destroyed in the blitz, something like that, I don't know. But I find it a very amusing image and a very charming image. But again, I felt a bit weird putting a photo of someone's house in the book. Um, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't have minded, but um, 
I felt a bit strange about it personally, but I really like the idea. This image of the little beehive, I really like. I just love how, again, it just shows the real qualities of the 50mm 1.4 and why it's my favourite lens. It's got a real ethereal quality to it. I really like how the leaves come out and how they kind of dissipate and melt away, but not too much. Uh, the only reason I didn't pick this was because it just wasn't, it didn't really fit with anything else. But I really like it as a standalone image. I just think it looks really nice. And, I don't know, I'm sure I make a nice little advertisement for little bee houses for anyone who makes them so uh, but I really like the image but I just don't feel like it worked in context of the book and now we'll just move on to the plain old naff ones so these are the ones that were just in focus and I just thought were a bit shit to be honest with you uh, image of Ferrum bus station it's an image it's there I don't like it it's I think the only reason I picked it was because maybe the colors were quite rich and just I thought oh maybe I could use it to juxtapose another image or give context to another image but that another image never happened so it never made the cut um, same with this this image is a building from the the dock area uh, where there's now a marina um, again it was a it was port town many 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 years ago and that's kind of where Ferrum originated from and it still has you know a marina there but it's more used for leisure craft than anything else um, again it's just there it's an image there's nothing special about it there's nothing interesting about it i took it i think i just had it because it was in focus and it kind of was exposed well and everything like that um what i did find amusing was when i was walking around i was going around i think again whether it's just someone didn't like the idea of me taking photos around there but uh, whether it was the f5 being a bit provocative uh but there was someone who clearly worked in the marina building as i was going around kind of deciding whether to take photos and i'm like just staring at me I'm like mate it's a building like it's a, it's a workplace like it's on google maps chill um but yeah, so those were what didn't make the cut, the, the good, the out of context, and the just plain old naff and didn't really work. Uh, I hope that was some help. Um, Ferrum 35mm is for sale uh, via the link that's in the description, or if I've shared it to social media, it'll be attached to that. Um, it is completely self-published. I paid for everything outright, so I would really appreciate it if you picked up a copy. That would be wonderful to see. And, you know, I, well, I've sold three copies so far. Uh, one to one of my best friends, one to my mum, and one to someone who I didn't know. So that's a victory. But yeah, no, if uh, you're thinking of picking up a copy, that'll be amazing. Even if you just give it a share, that'll be wonderful. Thank you very much. I hope you have a lovely day.